In this video, I'm taking your submitted GFX, fix them up, and walking you through the exact changes I made to help teach you how to take your GFX to the next level. You'll see how even the slightest changes can make a big difference to the final result, and learn how to catch and fix these details in your own work too. If you want the chance to have your GFX fixed and featured in a future video, make sure to join the GFX Rhino Discord server and head over to the submissions channel. Link is in the description below. Let's get right into it. Alright, first up we've got the scene of a prisoner sprinting away from a cop. It's a simple idea, it's a cool concept, and props to you, I can actually tell what's happening in the scene. With some beginner GFX, you can't even tell what's going on, but there's definitely a few things holding it back. The lighting is super, super harsh, like the shadows are just very strong, I think. The posing is quite stiff. You've definitely done better at posing than most, but it's still quite stiff. And the camera angle, bro, it's, it's the bare minimum camera angle. So let me show you how you can turn this into a proper action shot. So the first thing I messed around with was the camera your focal length was sitting at the default of 50 millimeters which is fine if you're making like a cooking tutorial but for an action scene like this drop that down i pulled it back angled it lower and immediately it started to feel way more intense so definitely don't underestimate camera angles and the layout and everything you've seen it definitely is what carries your scene to look good next up is to fix the poses and man i see this all the time where with like running poses and even walking poses too you've got the character running but their torso is standing up completely straight to get more realistic running poses you do have to bend their torso over quite a lot because of course you're leaning forward you're running you're leaning into that next step you know what i mean that's how we run in real life so definitely hunch them over a lot more make it feel like they're actually moving you know also small thing but definitely very important you had the left arm and the left leg going forward at the same time in real life it's actually the opposite so when one leg goes forward the opposite arm swings forward too that's what keeps us balanced and boom it already looks way more natural Alright, moving on to the cop next, same sort of fixes, leaned him forward, of course, tweaked the arms, the legs and everything just a little bit and made sure he wasn't just jogging like he's on his lunch break or something, you know, you gotta really sell the idea that this is an action scene and he's chasing after the prisoner. Already I think the scene is starting to look awesome, but as a little extra tweak too, I actually went ahead and changed the faces as well, the ones you had were completely fine, but I just felt like the prisoner needed like a very cocky sort of look, like, like I'm about to escape, like a sort of smirk, you know, and the cop needed to look like he was actually mad. Not a super necessary step, but I thought it made it look better. Getting onto the lighting, it was definitely very, very harsh. The HDRI had extremely strong shadows, which made the scene look very unbalanced. All I did was rotate the HDRI slightly, lowered its intensity a little bit, and also added a subtle, like, sun lamp to just help even out the lighting across the scene a little bit. To do a bit more advanced sort of lighting, I just went in and did some area lights that were light linked to the characters, matching the natural direction of the light coming from the left side. On top of that, I added a couple very very low power point lights to the face and the torso areas just to make sure the characters were visible and properly separated from the background without looking unnatural definitely make sure not to overdo something like this because they can look very very um uh, and also your render resolution, bro, I don't even know. I knocked it back down to just 1920 by 1080. But a little tip for anyone who is trying to do like 4K or anything, instead of like trying to do the maths and increasing each number here, you can actually use the resolution percentage here without you needing to do all the maths and stuff. Setting this to 200% does get you to 4K quality. I also tried giving the prisoner like a little contraband prop just for like story points and it, I don't know, it didn't really work. But I also selected my camera, went under the camera properties and scrolled down to depth of field and enabled that and just added a very slight blurred effect to the background, which is just pulling all the focus right where it needs to be. Very simple, but very effective. I went ahead and jumped into Photoshop or Photo P if you need a free alternative and did the usual sort of stuff. I right clicked on my layer and made sure it was a smart object. I added a camera raw filter and to do camera raw filter for anyone who doesn't know it's just mess around with the sliders until it looks good. It's, it's that easy. I tried all these different color management things, but I don't really think they worked out too well. So it was just a pretty basic camera or filter. I went back in a blender and got a crypto mat, which I do actually got a full crypto mat tutorial if you want to learn how to do that. I used that crypto mat to get a mask of the characters. I made two layers. One was set to overlay and one was set to soft light for the blend types and just added some subtle shading and everything to the characters to make them sort of pop out more.
I even tried adding a bit of a shadow under the hat of the cop, but it just didn't really work, so I just scrapped it. And last but not least, I did actually make selections of the teeth and the mouths. Mouths? Mouths? How do you say that? And just everything of the faces of the character in general, and just made them stick out a whole lot more, because faces can definitely have a big part in composition. I also just manually went in with a brush and sort of made it stick out more. And after that, I thought it looked pretty nice. Now, this is one thing that I noticed a lot of beginners do, is they add in some fog, like, inside of Photoshop, and it's usually just down at the feet like this it's either an overlay or a brush and to be honest it just usually doesn't really look that good so to do some fog instead i just went ahead and grabbed the selection of my characters inverted it added a solid color adjustment layer in dropped it inside of a group with a mask and then just masked out where it was closer to the camera so this kind of gives it the effect of distance as it gets foggier the further it goes i won't go too deep into this just because i don't really think it's a method you should be using i'd recommend maybe the mist pass or just adding volumetrics inside of blender instead but either way add some fog in and it already starts to make your characters pop out from the background just a little bit more time for some finishing touches so for the sky i went to unsplash try to have it at least somewhat match the camera like position of your scene just chuck a few adjustment layers and everything onto it until it matches. and honestly that's it that's the that's the whole trick don't even overthink it just tweak it till it till it works you know skies can be kind of tricky though you can try a bunch of different ones you can even just try using the default hdri sky i think your sky and the original one it was definitely just a bit too blue Blue. it's too saturated compared to the rest of the colors like if you look at some of the colors on the copy you've either got them too dark or too bright and then you look at the sky and it's just this super bright saturated blue so it doesn't match too well and wrapping up here is the final result and yeah it's definitely a big difference i think the camera's actually doing its job now you know making a very nice action scene the lighting feels a lot more cinematic i think and the posing actually sells movement and action and the whole scene just has way more energy definitely still a few things i could have tweaked and done a bit better but overall it's definitely a solid upgrade in my opinion hopefully that one gave you something you can apply to your own gfx all right on to the next one we've got this cowboy versus caveman bar fight scene the idea is very very fun the setting like of them being in a bar like the bar model you use here is solid but yeah the render itself yeah the render itself definitely isn't anything special before i even touch anything let's just talk about this original render like what's going on with the lighting you've got full-on stage lights beaming from under their feet and yeah you made use of light linking but it's just so so overdone the lights are white where the rest of your scene is actually yellow and it's just so overdone the idea of using area lights and everything to just enhance your lighting a lot more is to have them match your natural environment scene lighting and all you're doing with it is just making the characters stick out from the background a little bit more i just noticed there's even an area light on the chair and yeah i just think this right here is a perfect example of what not to do with light linking the characters are glowing so hard they don't even look like they're in the scene they've got lighting coming from the floor like like why where, where's that lighting coming from what's the source of that light why is his foot glowing when it's the floor down here? more advanced lighting and light linking in general and everything like that should just make your characters pop just enough from the background to make them the focus point not make them look like they got photoshop slapped on top of it in five minutes before the deadline man. first thing i did was try to get a grip on the lighting but your outliner was completely a mess like there was no sort of organization so i had to go up to select all by type and then do light and this just select every light in the scene and then i deleted every single one clicked x and yeah just fully reset the lighting we're gonna start from scratch with that but let's get on to the camera your focal length was set to like 53.24 which okay technically i guess that's different from the default camera angle but basically nothing changed i dropped that all the way down to 30 just to get a more dynamic and actiony feel going back to the original gfx everyone's just the same size and equally lit which means there's no clear focus point you've got the bartender the caveman the cowboy and even the guy sitting on the side and none of them feel like they're the main character maybe the cowboy a little bit but you get the idea and why is there a walter white poster on the wall bro yeah i'm not even mad either that's actually a fire poster i'm gonna try to keep that in the end so for posing i've just wiped both characters and started completely fresh the caveman and the cowboy both looked like they were just mid conversation not mid fight you know <laughs> cowboy's pose was uh it's all right but the gun in his hand blocked too much of his body so i moved it to his left hand 
The gun still looked tiny, but hey, Roblox scaling is what it is, man. After getting sort of a basic pose for the cowboy, I went on to doing the caveman, which I may or may not have used an AI reference, which in the AI reference, it had a massive mouth. And I thought it looked really good for like a dumb caveman. So I just went into edit mode, selected all of the faces around his mouth and just scaled them up a little bit. It kind of did leave this weird shadow in the end, but it's not really noticeable. It looks fine and I could have removed it anyway. And I made him lean back a lot like he was just caught with a surprise shot to the ribs or something. I also resized him a bit too. I made him a bit smaller because once again, sort of a dumb, small caveman. I don't know. And I don't know what you were doing with this like bat thing, whatever you call this in the original. I don't know why it's a little small one, but I definitely made it a lot bigger to actually make it more dramatic and scary, I guess. Because in the original, it's this little tiny one. I don't, I don't. All right, let's actually make a start on this lighting, but we're going to do it properly this time. First things first, we want to set up the basic environment lighting. I took the lights on the roof. I made them into their own texture and made them emissive with a soft sort of orange light. I also just duplicated a few walls to cut it out from the external outside lighting. And I removed some glass from the windows to just let some natural sunlight in. After messing around with those lights on the roof for a bit, it did already start to look nice. So I went ahead and did use some area lights and light linking. Because the lighting's coming from the top, that's where we're gonna have most of the lighting coming from. You can literally already see the kind of basic layout of the lighting after you have your environment lighting set up. So for example, look at the cowboy here. You've got rim lights coming from the left. You've got a little bit coming on the leg on the right, right there. And probably better you look at the caveman too. It's coming all along the left side of him up the top here, because of course that's where the lighting's coming from, sort of above. So all we're doing now is using these area lights light linked onto each character to enhance that part of it. Now they pop a whole lot more, but still look like they actually belong in the scene. I even just added subtle front lighting with a, a big area light just to keep things visible without going overboard and stuff. Faces and bodies clear, no weird glow coming from below or anything. Damn, that just run. I did actually end up removing this left guy too. I just felt like he brought attention away from everything. And of course I made sure to get the Walter White poster in the back. Oh my. Let's get on to Photoshop. So I rendered it out, pulled it into Photoshop, got my crypto mats. I literally just added a curves adjustment layer with the mask set to just the characters or just the main two characters at least. Did that same fog trick from before. Once again, solid color, inverted mask, group it, erase the foreground and everything to build some depth. It really didn't add that much in this scene, especially when the scene is already quite flat. Like there's not much distance. So why would there be fog in this little distance? You know, I probably should have added depth the field on the camera but i guess i i don't know i wasn't thinking straight i don't know now we're just doing the same sort of thing with shading before i also realized the cowboy's side lighting wasn't actually orange enough so i didn't actually take my own advice from earlier so i just kind of messed around with like an overlay and a hue saturation layer and a color balance layer and everything just to try and match that rim lighting to be more warm and orange like it is meant to be in the scene Of course, a quick Minecraft break, had to clear out the XP farm, killed some skeletons, you know how it is. Now I got into doing this muzzle flash. Honestly, I kind of sucked at it at first. So I just went on Google and found this little thing of muzzle flashes. You can get them from anywhere. I masked this singular muzzle flash out, set the layer to screen so all the black just disappears, and then added a bit of glow behind it, a bit of glow on the gun, on the hand, and most importantly, on the face and everything of the caveman. To be honest, I probably should have added a few more area lights inside of Blender in the first place to actually light all that up to work with the muzzle flash without needing to do this all inside of Photoshop, you know? But I still think it looked pretty good. Some final touches, I did a tilt shift blur for almost like some fake depth of field. I made a selection of just the background, duplicated it and made it into a smart object, gave it the mask because now it was just a layer of the background. And I went on a filter, blur gallery, tilt shift and angled it with the camera to fade the blur just right. 
And this is the final GFX. It's way better. It's way better. The, the action is really there. The posing sells the moment a lot. And the lighting actually fits the space now. Honestly, some self-criticism. I don't think the characters stick out from the background enough just yet. All right, and that's it for today's fixes. Big shout out to everyone who decided to submit their GFX work. It definitely takes guts to put your GFX art on screen for everyone to see. And of course, get criticism and everything. That definitely deserves a lot of respect. No hate in the comments, please. It's all fun. It's all just for improvement. And I hope a lot of you watching, especially the original creators you guys can take some things away and apply it to your own gfx it's always cool getting to see what you're working on and finding ways to push it further once again if you want your gfx featured and improved in the next video join the gfx runner discord server and head over to the fix my gfx channel or fixing your gfx or whatever it's called make sure you're subscribed with notifications so you don't miss out on the next one and if you did learn something definitely make sure to let me know in the comments what part helped you the most i'll see you all next time peace